Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat Shalom. This lesson is titled, The Mystery of the Man of Sin and the Image of the Beast May Offend Some. For sure. And mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, the scripture talks about the word offending people. And mm -hmm. all we're doing is we're going to bring to you the word mm -hmm. and we're going to bring to you truth. That's it. And we're going to let you be the judge. Okay. Yes. But we're going to show you this image. Mm -hmm. Okay. The image of the beast. Now, first of all, let's go to Romans because I want to show you what's going on with man and how man mm -hmm. is trying to create this image, right? Mm -hmm. And how the image of the beast has been along a long, or been around a long time, but man's he's been really gearing up to get people to worship this image, and Paul saw it. We're gonna go there, okay? Let's go to Romans chapter. One, that's verse 22 and 23, is it? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Romans chapter 1, verses 22 and 23 reads as follows. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, fools. and changed the glory of the incorruptible Yah into an image made like corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. So they changed the glory of the uncorruptible Elohim mm -hmm. into what? An image mm -hmm. of a corruptible man and four foot of beasts and other animals. Mm -hmm. Wow, you see that? Mm -hmm. It's in the scripture that they would do this. They would change the glory of Yah to a corruptible image. An image of a man. Of a man. Pay attention mm -hmm. here, right? So now, let's go to Hebrews because Yah has an image. He has a uh, his glory and his image. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you this here, right? Yeah, now, we're going to show through this lesson, too, yes. that imaging is very powerful. This is yes. why you have to pay very close attention to yes. um, images that are per portrayed or presented. presented. Let, let me say this to you, just like you said. Images are powerful. They're very powerful to the point to where Yah said, Israel, you better not have any graven image around here. Mm -hmm. Because if you do, it's going to anger me and I'm going to bring my wrath upon you. Mm -hmm. So Yah didn't play that image thing, right? You couldn't just give up. That's why Israel had so many problems because they had idols everywhere. Mm -hmm. Idols and little statues and little gods that they would worship from time to time. That's why God didn't want these images. Mm -hmm. But man goes out and he creates another image. Now watch this. This is Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 reads as follows. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the power, the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins and sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So it's talking about Yahushua HaMashiach. It said that he was the express image of, of his person. Talking about Yah. Mm -hmm. He was the express image of Yah. Mm -hmm. Right? So Yahushua had an image. An express image of Yah. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to show you something here. Let's go. I'm going to show you this. I want you to see this. Right? When you look at this word, express image. It's Hebrews chapter 1. Let me just pull it up here. Mm -hmm. And let's get the Greek for The Hebrew for it. No, Greek. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Okay, it says express image. Okay, what does that word say? Character. <laughs> An English word. Mm -hmm. Character. So you see, you see, oh, that, 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 he, he, he's a certain character. Mm -hmm. Oh, this person is a certain character in a play. Or a good portrayal <laughs> of something. <laughs> That's right. A character. portrayal or character. That's right. Character. Express image. An Repre exact copy a representation a representation wow mm -hmm. are you hearing it now watch this right mm -hmm. now we know that that spoke about the messiah right being express image of his person of yahuwah right mm -hmm. but man was created in the image of yah too right mm -hmm. right it yes. says in the image of yah created he him the he them man and woman created he him right them right mm -hmm. so he said, I created him in my image, right? Mm -hmm. Pay attention. So when he created man in the image, what's going on here? What is he talking about here, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's it, it can get kind of deep here mm -hmm. because man isn't just, um, his, his, the only physical part of him is a physical image of man, but there's also a spiritual image, right? Mm -hmm. And man, we know, is both body, soul, and spirit, right? Yes. But let's watch this, right? But now let's go to Daniel chapter 7. 
because Daniel chapter 7 is going to tie this into this, this man of sin and the image of the beast, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to talk about this. And one thing you need to understand is it's going to talk about someone else too. Mm -hmm. And guess who? The Ancient of Days. Mm. And it's going to describe the Ancient of Days. Mm -hmm. Now listen to this. Daniel chapter 7, what yep. verse are we reading? Start at the, the entire chapter. The entire chapter. Okay. Yes. Daniel chapter 7. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babel, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spoke and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heavens strove upon the great sea, and the four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. Mm -hmm. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon the feet as a man. Mm -hmm. And a man's heart was given to it. Mm -hmm. And behold, another beast, a second like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of its between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour my flesh. After this I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly mm -hmm. and it had great iron teeth iron teeth it devoured and broke in pieces and stamped the remnant with the foot of it and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it mm -hmm. and it had ten horns mm -hmm. and i considered the horns and behold there came up among them another little horn mm -hmm. before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots and behold in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man and a mouth speaking great things okay now i'm gonna take over here mouth speaking great things i'll pay attention now watch what happens here so now this this vision that daniel is having is actually the same vision like what what john had in the book of revelations mm. about the beast they're even described of life, right? Yes. Now watch this. Now, you got to understand something because you're going to see this, right? The beast itself and the image of the beast are two different things because it tells you what the beast look like, mm -hmm. but the beast has an image, mm -hmm. right? So pay attention now. Let's go to the next part of this chapter, okay? It says, I beheld, this verse 9, I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the Ancient of Days did sit whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like pure wool. Wait a minute. Is this Yahushua's talking about? Talking or is the Father? The Ancient of Days. The Ancient of Days. This is the Father's talking That's about, right? right. <laughs> it says, and his throne was like a fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. And the judgment was set, and the books were opened. And I beheld then, because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. So this horn gonna speak some great words, right? And the ancient days don't hear these words, right? And I beheld till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given the burning flame as concerning the rest of the beast, as concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away and yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. 
And I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the son of man. Now pay attention. He said, I saw in the night vision, one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven. Wow. Remember in Matthew, mm -hmm. it says that. And came to the ancient of days. So he, the one like the son of man that's riding in the clouds, is going to come to who? The ancient of days, right? And they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion, glory, a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom that was that which shall not be destroyed. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's described the ancient of days, and it says this one like the son of man is going to come up to him. Mm -hmm. That's the scriptures. Remember, it says the Lamb, the slain for the thousand people, gonna come up to the, is gonna come up to Yah in Revelations, right? That's in the scriptures. So now we have established that the Ancient of Days it said he had woolly hair, didn't it? Yes, it did. And we know in Revelations it said that the Messiah also has woolly hair, right? Yes. Like father, like son, mm -hmm. image just alike, right? Mm -hmm. mm. And interesting. Mm. Now, may have you read? <laughs> so, before I continue on reading, we're trying to show you yes. the power of images. Yes. Okay? And the importance of images. Yes. Because mm -hmm. images are a portrayal or a representation or a character That's right. of mm -hmm. something, right? And so, the scripture talks about how man and woman were created in the image of Yah. Yep. Right? Okay? Yep. Then it goes on to tell you how the sun looks and it gave you a description of how um, the ancient of days himself looked. Mm -hmm. Yahuwah, right? We're talking about images. So as we go throughout this lesson, you're going to see and understand why we are talking about images because the title of this lesson, lesson is The Mystery of the Man of Sin and the Image of the Beast. Mm -hmm. The beast has an image, y'all. He has an image, that's right. Okay, so there are some that look like the portrayal or the representation of what the beast looks like. And guess what? Let me say this too. <laughs> Just like I said, the beast and the image of the beast are two different things. Let me, right. let me prove it to you. Mm -hmm. When it describes the beast, what does it say he looked like? It says he had the head of a leopard and it describes all these different heads he had, right? And all this. Ain't nobody worshiping that around. You see somebody worshiping that image around here? Do you? No. And the portrayal of that actual beast, because yeah. we know ain't nothing walking around here with, like Watchman said, looking yeah. like that, right? That's right. But those characteristics described, when well, you know it's talking about the iron That's teeth right. and all of that, it's talking about the characteristics. That's right. You see, you know how the scripture talks about Satan goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour? That's right. One of his characteristics is a roaring lion. So That's right. That's a characteristic. Okay, but there's also an appearance. Okay, That's so right. we're going to get into all of this because the scripture imaging can be more than just what something looks like, it can also be the character. That's because right. Yahusha, it said he was the expressed image of the Father or the character. Isn't that yes, both mm -hmm. you see. And so let's get into this. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to pick this back up at uh, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, Daniel was grieved in my ruach in the midst of my body and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall rise out of the earth. Mm -hmm. But the Kodashim, of El Elyon shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever. The saints, that's right. And ever and ever. Then I would know the truth of the four beasts, which was diverse from all the fourth beast, I'm sorry, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding mm -hmm. dreadful, whose teeth were of iron, nails of brass, which devoured broken pieces and stamped the remnant with his feet and of the ten horns that were in the head and of the other which came up 
and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spoke very great things, mm -hmm. whose look was more stout than his fellows. I behold... And the same horn made war with the Kodashim and prevailed against them mm -hmm. until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given to the Kodashim of El Elyon. And the time came that the Kodashim possessed the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth mm -hmm. And shall tread it down and break it into pieces. That's right. And the ten horns of this kingdom are ten kings mm -hmm. that shall rise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings, mm -hmm. and he shall speak great words against El Elyon. And shall wear out the Kodashim of El Elyon. Wear out the saints, that's right. And think to change times, times and laws. And laws, that's right. And they shall be given into his hands until a period of time and times and a dividing of time. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the Kodashim of El Elyon, That's right. whose kingdom is an <clears throat> everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cognitations must much troubled me, and my countenance changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. Wow. Okay, so basically... You see, it's talking about the last days. It's talking about when this, when this, um, this, this man of sin, right? And they, in this image, right? We're gonna get to that because it's gonna get deep. Then you're gonna show you this image, and we're gonna show mm -hmm. it to you too. So now, now that we know what the ancient of days look like, and we know what his son look like, and we also see what is going on, right? And we see how this man of sin is going to rise up and speak these great such great words and then, then he's going to rage war against Dakota Sheen, Dakota Sheen which are the saints of Yah right watch this pay attention now let's go to the book of Enoch because you need to see the description that it talks about about those that were born of the fallen angels I want you to see this this is the book of Enoch and let's go to chapter 105 Verse 1 through 3. I hope that's the same in here. Mm -hmm. Yes, I certainly hope so too. Um, Book of Enoch, 105. 1 through 3. Okay, Enoch, chapter 105, verses 1 through 3. Mm -hmm. After a time, my son Methuselah took a woman for his son Lamech. She became pregnant by him and brought forth a child, the flesh of which was as white as snow mm -hmm. and red as a rose. The hair of his head was white like wool and long and whose eyes were beautiful. When he opened them, he illuminated all the house like the sun. The whole house abounded with light. And when he was taken from the hand of the midwife, Lamech, his father, became afraid of him mm -hmm. and flying away came to his father Methuselah and said, mm -hmm. I have begotten a son unlike others. Mm -hmm. He is not of men, yeah. but resembling the offspring of the angels of heaven oh. is of a different nature, mm -hmm. being altogether unlike others. Us. Wow. Now, notice it says he resembled the offspring, mm -hmm. right, of the fallen angels. Yes. So these fallen angels are, if you look at what I described them, it says the flesh of which was as white as snow mm. and red as a rose. So it's telling you. When he saw them, he looked at, 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 at his son and he said, he looked just like the, the children of the fallen angels. Mm -hmm. mm. 
This is the scriptures, right? And now, I want to point out too. Yeah. I gotta reiterate. The passage made it seem like the father of this child, who was white like snow, red as a rose, that father was afraid of him. Yeah. As a matter of fact, it made it seem like he cut and ran out of there so fast. <laughs> yeah. He ran. He's he like, ran. "What have we begotten?" He is. I gotta. I gotta say this. Mm -hmm. what, what, gotta give it again. Go ahead. It says. And he was taken from the hand of the midwife. Lamech, his father, became afraid of him. Yeah. And flying away, he cut and ran, y'all, okay, to his father, Methuselah. I've begotten a son unlike others. I don't know what's going on. He said, he is not human. That's what Lamech said that's about his said. child. Yeah, now, what, what did said. his child look like again? Uh-huh. What did his child look like again? She said. His child did not look like man. He was white as snow yeah, he and was red like a rose children of the fallen and looked like the children of angels. That's right. Mm. Now He said he was altogether yeah. unlike us. That's right. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Imaging yeah. is very important. Imaging so. is very important. Now, let's go to the story of Gehazi. Let's go to chapter, this is 2 Kings chapter 5 verse 27. Second Kings chapter five, verse twenty-seven. Now, if you know the story of Gehazi, um, Gehazi had, was was dealing with um, Elijah at this particular moment, and he went and did something wrong, and he didn't know that Elijah had the power to see what he had done, and so Elijah, when he saw him, he put a curse on Gehazi, and we're going to read that part from there. Okay, so just verse 27. Uh, let me see. Because you kind of gave the backstory, so. I'll, I'll back it up to okay. uh, 24. That's good. And when he came to the tower, he took them from their hand and bestowed them in the house. And he let the men go and they departed. But he, ran, he went in and stood before his master and Elisha said unto him, Whence come you, Gehazi? Mm -hmm. And he said, Your servant went nowhere. And he said unto him, Went not my heart with you? <laughs> when the men turn against, again from the chariots to meet you, it is a time to receive the money and to receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servants and maid servants the leprosy thereof of Naaman shall cleave unto you and unto your seed forever and he went out from his presence a leper as white as snow so basically he put a curse on him, mm -hmm. okay and the curse was that you were going to be a clean leper basically because you know the scripture talks about clean lepers and unclean lepers mm -hmm. uh, cl uh, unclean leper would be spotted mm -hmm. okay a clean leper would be completely white no spots basically and so he said basically you're going to leave from here and you're going to be the the leprosy of lima of nima is going to cleave unto you and your seed forever your offspring and it says he went out from his presence a mm. leper as white as snow mm. wow Pay attention. Mm. Let's go to Numbers chapter 12. And you'll see where we're going with this. Let's go to Numbers chapter 12, verse 10. Numbers chapter 12, mm -hmm. verse 10. I want to say, as we get into this lesson more and more, the scripture warned that some would be offended by the word. That's right. Now, you have to check your heart if the word offends you, Okay. I'm not saying if we offend you because we're bringing you the word. We're yeah. telling you what the scripture says. So some people are going to be just offended just because of who's bringing the message. Mm -hmm. But if someone who looked like what we're describing were bringing this message, it will probably be more readily accepted. But that's not the case here. Mm -hmm. We're bringing you the word. And if the word is sounding offensive to you at this point, it's probably a good time to go and pray. Okay. Yeah. Because right. and ask the Most High to soften your heart to receive His Word. That's okay. Right. Okay. So we are looking at Numbers. Yes. Chapter twelve, verse ten. Uh, you can start at verse ten and verse ten and eleven. 
Okay. Can I start at nine? Yeah, because it tells you what happened there. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. And the anger of Yahuwah was kindled against them, and he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle. And behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moshe, Alas, my lord, I beseech you, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. So again, it was another. It was a curse that Yah put on Miriam and turned her white, mm -hmm. leprous as snow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very similar to Gehazi. That's right. Exactly. You and the Gehazi you. seed. That's right. Forever. Forever. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to Exodus chapter 4, verse 6. And you're going to see why this is important. Because we know that um, all scripture is very important. Yes. And, and especially when it deals with um, imaging. Mm-hmm. Um, Moses chapter, this is deal with Moses, it's Exodus chapter 4 verse 6. Exodus chapter 4 verse 6 reads as follows. And Yahuwah said furthermore unto him, put now your hand into your bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes. So Moses put his hand in his bosom and he pulled it out and his leprosy is slow. Now, white as snow. White as snow. Mm. So that proves that Moses could not have been um, a white man. He had to have been a person of color because you would it wouldn't have been no different. You'd look so, okay, with his hand a little bit whiter than he already is, right? Mm -hmm. It couldn't have been that way. So this is proof, proof that he was a man of color. Now, why is this so important? I'll tell you why. Because we're trying to establish that there have been something going on with the imaging over the years and the image that's being pushed mm -hmm. to and worship. Yes, the image that's being worshipped. That's right. And another image has been just completely blocked out. <clears throat> that's right. But um, again, I wanted to um, just ex expound a little bit on what Watchman was saying about um, Moses and the hand thing. Mm -hmm. Now... I already know. I already know. It's mm -hmm. it because it is what it is. There are some that are watching who are feeling within yourself. Why are we talking about this? What difference does it make? You know how I know because that has been thrown at us like snowballs for <laughs> I don't know how long. More People like stones. constantly telling us <laughs> yeah. that images and things and looks and features and races and colors and all of this stuff don't matter while at the same time propping up images in front of us saying here he is here's the messiah here's yah mm -hmm. here's the children of israel here, yeah. here's this person here are the angels yeah putting all we're just getting snowballed <laughs> with images yes. right and when we just kind of whisper a little bit what they actually look like this it doesn't matter mm -hmm. everybody's telling us that images don't matter mm -hmm. what color is love <laughs> Everybody's telling us stuff don't matter while at the mm -hmm. same time throwing deception at us. Yeah. Okay. It does matter. I'm going to show you why. Now, we're going to go to a very important passage. This passage in Daniel is so important until you got to see it because this is going to play out in the last days. I talked about it in the last one we did, but I'm going to get into more details now. This is Daniel chapter 2, and we're going to look at verse... 31 through 45. Now I want you to pay attention. I can read half of that for you too. Daniel chapter 2 mm -hmm. verses 31 through 45 uh -huh. reads as follows. You, O king, saw and behold a great image, the great, this great image whose brightness was excellent, stood before you and the form thereof was terrible. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet are part of iron and clay. 
You saw that you saw till that a stone was cut out without hands, mm -hmm. which smote the image upon his feet, and that were of iron and clay, and broke them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain, mm -hmm. and filled the whole earth. Wow. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. You, O king, are a king of kings, for the Eloha of heaven has given you a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. Mm -hmm. And whosoever the children of men dwell, I'm sorry, and wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beast of the field and the fowls of the heavens has he given into your hand and has made you ruler over them all. You are the head of gold. And after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to you and another third kingdom of the brass which shall bear rule over all the earth. Okay, I can take it from here. Okay, then, then it says this here, verse 40. It says, And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron for as much as iron breaketh in pieces as to do of all things and as iron that break of all these shall it break in pieces and bruise and whereas thou sawest the feet and toes part of potter's clay and part iron the kingdom shall be divided and there shall be in it of the strength of the iron for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with mari clay, as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest the iron mixed with mari clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Hmm. And in the days of these kings shall Yah of heaven set up all set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to another people, but shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, and the silver, and the gold. The great Elohim have made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof is sure. So basically, pay attention now. So Nebuchadnezzar, right? It's important you understand what someone says Nebuchadnezzar because Nebuchadnezzar is a key finger figure as it relates to the image of the beast mm -hmm. and the um the coming of the man of sin. Okay? Now, pay attention. So Nebuchadnezzar was so excited about this image. You know what he did? He went and he built one. <laughs> so y'all wouldn't tell him the image. See how kind of a person can be? Y'all didn't tell him what it looked like so that he can go and build an image that looks like it, right? Y'all told him this so he would know the future so that it would be revealed in the scriptures what's going to happen to these kingdoms that's going to come. Not to this image, right? But <clears throat> this man wanted to build this image. And what did he want to do with this image? Did you know what he wanted to do? He wanted people to worship this image. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, that's in the word. It's in the word. So now let's go to chapter three and watch this. Start at verse one. Daniel chapter three, verse one. Nebuchadnezzar, the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babel, 
Then Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. the king, sent together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Right, so he got a dedication day. Now, we're going to dedicate this image. Well, you all to come and show up, right? Keep going. <laughs> Then the princes, the governors and captains, the judges and treasurers and counselors and sheriffs and the rulers of the province were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, decimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. Uh, or else what? And whosoever falls mm -hmm. not down and worships the same hour be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore at that time when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, Flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Now, are you hearing this? So he made this image, and he said, you're going to bow down, you're going to worship this image, I'm going to throw you in the flames of fire. So now we know where the story of the three mm. Israelite boys came from, right? right? Because you know the story. They refuse to bow down to this image. Right? Mm -hmm. The same thing in history is being played out in these last days. It's going to get played out in these last days. That many have already started to worship this image. image. And notice, what was it? It was the image of a man. Mm -hmm. uh. mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. was the image of a man. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to show you something here, okay? I'm going to show you this image real quickly here. Let's go to this image. And let's see, it's in here. Okay, this is Debra Chinez's dream image. Interesting, mm -hmm. huh? Mm -hmm. There it is. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to look at the face of that image. You see it? Mm -hmm. Look at the face of the image. Don't forget it. Don't forget that face. Okay? Now, let's go down here. I want to show you another a Babylonian statue. Okay? Mm. Hmm. Let's see where they got that image from for the head. Mm -hmm. This statue is dated thousands of years old. Hmm. Okay? Pay attention. Okay? Because we're going to get deeper into this because this image that they have um, set up is so that all would worship it. The three Israelite boys, we know. They refused to worship the image, didn't they? Yes. And when they refused to worship the image, what happened? They were thrown into the furnace. Right. So now, in these last days, this image is being put forth. And millions of people have already worshipped this image. Mm -hmm. They're worshipping it. I'm going to prove it to you. Because this image is everywhere. And some of you out there even watching this broadcast have even worshipped these images at one time or another. Mm -hmm. That's right. So now, I want you to pay attention because I want to show you something here. You saw that image, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Watch this. I'm going to show you another image. You know who that's supposed to be? That's a statue of Adam and Eve. Hmm. Interesting, huh? It's an old statue portrayal of Adam and Eve. Look at the face. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to show you another one. And this is Abraham, Moses, David, and Solomon. Now these are the images. 
These are the images. Look at the face. Moses. That's Abraham first. Moses, David, and Solomon. Now, when we say th that's who they are, we're saying that these are the images right. that have been presented to the world. They're saying, hey, this is what they all look like. This is what they look like, mm -hmm. right? Pay attention. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you another one. This here is the Greek god of Mars. Okay. The god of war is what they refer to him as. Look at the face. Looks almost just like the other ones. Hmm? Let's enlarge that image a little bit for those of you who can't see it too well. Look at these images. Look at the face. Looks just like the other ones, right? Mm -hmm. Pay attention. You're going to see how closely all of these look alike. Now, you're going to think this is the same one. No, it's a different person. This is the Greek god of medicine. Huh. Interesting. See it? Mm -hmm. These are images. These are images. Pay attention. Now, I want to show you a drawn image that someone did of Esau and Jacob. Hmm. <laughs> see, see how they look? No, they, they look just alike. Matter of fact, they look just like the statues, too. Yeah, they do. They look just like the statues, right? Mm -hmm. Pay attention. Pay attention. Now, That's those are drawn images. Those are drawn images. Now, here's a, a, a statue of Ezekiel. This is a statue that they did of an old, very old statue of supposedly Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. But don't this look just like the same face of all of those other gods and mm -hmm. images, right? Mm -hmm. From Adam, right? Mm -hmm. Now, watch this. Now, here is the so-called image of God. You remember the famous artist Michelangelo painted the image of God on the hmm. ceiling of the 16th chapel, right? Mm -hmm. This is that image that he painted of God. Don't it look just like the other fellas? Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. But wait a minute. Moses surely should look different, right? Nope. That's Moses. That's their portrayal. Right. Of Moses. Right. Understand what I'm saying to you. I'm not saying these are how they right, actually right. look. I'm showing you the images that they have presented it, yes. for people to look at and mm -hmm. to worship, right? Mm -hmm. Notice they all look alike. Mm -hmm. They all look just alike, right? Mm -hmm. Some of these images, if I were to take the head off of them and put it on the other statue, you wouldn't know them apart, mm -hmm. right? Now, pay attention. Now, here is another fella. This guy's name is Jesse Custer. It was in a movie. I think the movie is actually called Jesse Custer. And this is the image they had in the movie of God on the right side. Mm. Interesting, huh? Mm -hmm. Can we enlarge that a little bit? Yes, let's do that. Jesse Custer. And notice the name they gave him, JC. <laughs> yeah, Jesse Custer. <laughs> Jesse Custer. Isn't that something and that's right? that's God, so he's supposed to be the son, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. Now, this one here is... The Jesus Christ image that everyone that we know they worship this image, right? Mm -hmm. The Jesus Christ image. Okay, it, it was funny how they give him a little browner skin in this picture here. Mm -hmm. that, which you know, you can see. still tell he's a portrayal yep. of a European. That's right, exactly. So now I got another fella I want to show you here. Here's another Jesus, no Jesus image here, the statue. Now, remember the other image statues I showed you and the images mm -hmm. that were portrayed, right, of these other gods and other people of the scriptures? They used the same, same head, same look-alike, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The same thing. There it is in almost all of these photos or statues, right? Mm -hmm. Now, this one here is very interesting, right? Because this is from a series called 4400. Mm -hmm. And this guy was literally like it was supposed to be like a savior. You know what his name is? Jordan Collier. JC again. JC again. There it is. And the again. series 4400. 4400. That's right. That's right. It just kind of made us think about the 144,000. But anyway, let's keep it moving. <laughs> and that's yeah. Now, it, he reminds me, actually, I don't know if you remember um, Return of the King. What was the name of the movie? Um,. Mm -hmm. Return of Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. That particular one. Remember when the king showed up and he was getting these ghosts? He was trying to get mm -hmm. these these dead ghosts 
to come and fight for him. Mm-hmm. And, they, and he was like, what say ye? And all this stuff, right? He said, will you fight for the king? I am the king. Mm-hmm. You know what he looked like? Like him. Mm-hmm. JC. So he's coming back with all these resurrected ghosts, and he's going to clean the earth of them, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, wow. Mm-hmm. Interesting, huh? Mm-hmm. Now watch this here. You know who that is? Lucifer. Hmm. <laughs> so even the devil, you even affixed the same image to who? The devil. Hmm. Right? The same image. Wow. Interesting, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the whole world has been bombarded. Yeah. With images. Yeah. Of people of the past ancient people angelic people heaven yeah. and earth the whole world has mm-hmm. the whole world has been bombarded with these images yes. and the whole world has accepted these images and the whole world marvels at these images the whole world right. worships these images and the whole world tries to look like these images that's right mm. I want I want to show you a couple more because that's supposed to be Michael right the archangel mm-hmm. and I'm getting over to this one that I need you to see. Now, this is funny. This is Neptune. Mm. Same one, right? Mm. Neptune. Neptune. This is supposed to be Paul of the scriptures. Why does he look like Neptune? Why does he Mm -hmm. look like all of the other figures, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Here's Peter. Why does Peter supposed to look like all the other figures too, right? Now, watch this. It's going to get interesting. Here's a God, Prometheus. Same thing. Why does he have an eagle on his shoulder? Hmm. Interesting, huh? Hmm. Why does he have that eagle? Look yeah, at what him. is that eagle about? Yes. Because you know the scripture talks about the eagle, right? Yes. Yeah. Isn't that something? Mm-hmm. Now, here's where I'm going with this. I want you to see this, right? This image here, let's go to this one first. This is supposed to be Noah. Okay. That's Noah, and this here is supposed to be St. John, right? They all look so very similar. They look so similar, and this here is supposed to be Zeus. Interesting, huh? Mm -hmm. Look at Zeus and tell me, don't Zeus look like this image here, Serapis? Yes. <laughs> wow. They look like twins. They look <laughs> like twins. This is Serapis on the right, and this is supposed to be Zeus, right? A Greek guy. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to tell you where I'm going with this because they use this image for a reason because this is what Paul was talking about. When Paul sat there and Paul said, you know what? He said, the mystery of iniquity is already working in his days. Mm-hmm. You know why Paul said that? Because this image right here of Serapis was around in his days. You know what, when it was dated? This statue was dated 30, 30 years B.C. before the time of Christ, or the Messiah. Mm. Paul was born around when? Paul was, was actually died in 67 A.D., mm. right? So now you see what's going on. Paul, when he saw this image... He didn't just see the image. Understand what Paul saw. He saw even the the um, rituals and all the things that were going that were dealing with Serapis. He saw it coming into the assemblies, mm-hmm. and he was like, "Man, this mystery of iniquity is already working. This image, mm-hmm. people are worshiping this image, y'all." Mm-hmm. And he saw it in his days. Now, one thing I want to make a, a point of. The Most High specifically said do not make any graven images because they will be worshipped as That's gods. Right. And so people think it's something just uh, completely innocent to have a statue or an image or something like That's that. Right. But these images were formed because they wanted to somewhat deify That's right. what they were portraying by making these images. That's right. Making the likeness of a person. Well, even if they were making a likeness of Moses, they were trying to deify him with that image to show people here is a representation Mm -hmm. of Moses or whoever, right? Right. And so these images in and of themselves were almost like gods. That's why Yahuwah said, do not make any graven images of anything in heaven or in earth. That's right. Man, woman, or beast. That's right. And so so when you look at these images, you see these images, guess what? 
So do you understand why they use the same image from Adam to Elohim of heaven? Let's use the same image, right? For his son, for his apostles, for the angels, for the devil. They use the same image. Why do they use the same image? Because they're trying to get your mindset to be in a mind of worship. So when you see this image, you'll automatically worship it. Or, let me, let me say this real quick. When you see anyone that resembles... Wow, did those you hear that? images. That's right. You will put that person up on a pedestal. That's right. You'll say to yourself, oh, he or she looks just like these images that I see all of the time. That's God, right. Jesus, Paul, Moses, That's all right. of them, angels. That's right. Because notice even the angels are portrayed as um, either strong, handsome European men. That's right. Or beautiful European women, right? They're portrayed as this everything that matters, everything that's wonderful and beautiful and heavenly and earthly and mm -hmm. powerful. Yep. They all look like, hmm. Serapis. <laughs> <laughs> all of these images that yep. we see, they all look like something that people like to worship. Yeah. And so once it's in your mind that this is what everything good and holy and righteous is going is supposed to look like mm -hmm. so when you see people now i want to make this one point here when you see people that look like this you're automatically going to put them up on that pedestal mm -hmm. too but one th one point that i want to make yes i know i've been beating around the bush but i gotta say this now say it all of these mm -hmm. images mm -hmm. you know what they look like you know what their color is mm -hmm. okay and you know what race of people they are trying to portray Yep. But notice throughout scripture, this is why we said the image is going to be offensive. When we tell you all some things, right. what the scripture says about people that look a certain way, that look this way, they were either the children of angels mm -hmm. or they were leprous or they had some type of curse placed upon them, like in the case of Jahazi. That's okay, right. Miriam, she had a punishment placed on her for a sin that she committed. Well, wait a minute, guess what? It's actually a fact in science, and all you have to do is it do is. Your research. It's a fact in science that what, what they say about um, the recessive. It's a recessive gene did not recessive. have melanin. Yes. That's a fact. So, in other words, that's not normal. Right. Did you hear what I said? Mm hmm. That's not normal. Mm hmm. Wow. It is what it is. It is what it is. It, it is, is what, what it is. is. This is why we said it's going to be offensive. That's okay? right. Okay? But it's, it's only that way because people get in their feelings. I'm just going to use that terminology that I hear a lot of people use yeah. all the time. When you get in your feelings, that's another way of saying you are getting in your flesh. You are a flesh or a carnal person. Mm -hmm. And so the carnal mind is enmity against Yah so that you cannot please Yah because you walk in the flesh mm -hmm. and not in the spirit. Yes. You're going to seek to feel or fulfill the desires of the flesh. Mm -hmm. Anyone who is in the spirit or in the Ruach mm -hmm. or sitting in the presence of Yahuwah, you are not offended by this, even though you might look a certain way. Yeah. You're not offended by it if you are walking in the Ruach. That's right. You're a new creature, first of all. But if you feel in this, <laughs> if you feel even a little a little tinge of this, a little bit of offense, that means you have a heart problem and you have not truly repented because this is the word. That's the word. This is the word. To be leprous or white as snow is a curse. That's right. Okay? And this is why deception is so thick in the world what have the indigenous people been told and taught for so long mm -hmm. to the point where they despise what they look like they despise the image of yah do you know that you when you have melanin that is that that's one of the attributes of the man that sits on the throne mm -hmm. yes, or the ruach that sits on the throne the scripture <laughs> tells you yeah. that he had uh, he looked like Sardis stone. Mm -hmm. I wish we had an image of the Sardis stone. But if you if you want to um, know what it looks like, uh, we put that in the oh, Whited yeah. Out series. Okay. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it They'll tells it. you what he looks like. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so what deception does, deception says, okay, um, 
in the book of Maccabees, it said that they were going to change the likeness. That's right. That they were going to um, lay open the book of the law and think to change things into the likeness of their own images. That's right. So they had to flood the world with, their images. with all of these images because they had to elevate this image this because is... they already knew that the portrayal of them in all actuality was representative of a curse or leprosy. The scripture says it's, or the, punishment. it's, the, it's the image of the beast. It is what it is. It's yes. the image of the beast. This is why they, they, this image was pushed like it was. This is why Daniel, he when he, he said, Nebuchadnezzar, he, he put this statue together as the image of a man. What man? It's a certain man. He wants you to see this. Right? The fourth kingdom ruling on the that's earth. That's right. He Who's to... ruling right now? Yeah, that's right. That's right. The scripture talks about the dragon giving his power to the beast. That's right. Okay. Who has power in the earth right now to where they go around the earth, they tread it down, mm -hmm. and break it into pieces? Break it in pieces. Who has the power? Now, get this. I want y'all to understand something. This is why we wanted to establish the, import the importance of images early on. Even though first man and woman were created in the image of Yah, having melanin, they failed to sin. Okay? So just because you look like Yah or you were created in his image doesn't mean that you are automatically righteous. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because Adam and Eve failed to sin. And then their children after and after and after fell in sin, got so bad to the most I had to do some destroying, right? Mm -hmm. So even though they were created in the image of Yah, mm -hmm. they became sinful man and woman. That's right. Okay? So even if you look like, I mean, I'm just going to say this for those who um, are not understanding what we're saying. Just because you look like the image of the beast, remember Gehazi? Mm -hmm. Remember Miriam? Mm-hmm. They look like what the scripture uh, said that the fourth kingdom was going to be like. Right. That skin, that you have albinos, just because you look like that doesn't automatically mean that you represent the image of the beast. That's right. You see, because the seed of Gehazi is someplace on this earth <laughs> and it looks white and leprous as snow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so what you got to understand basically is that this this is the image that they have been pushing for years, mm -hmm. for thousands of years they've been pushing this image. And the reason why they're pushing that image is because they're trying to get people in the last days so that they would worship this image. And this is the image of the beast. Mm -hmm. Notice it says he will cause them to worship the image. These people that worship the image, they don't even know it. Mm -hmm. They don't even know it. Here you got people of other nations, right? other nations mm -hmm. that won't even they, they won't even deal with an African person mm -hmm. right but they would readily deal with anyone that looked like this image mm -hmm. right even though people who look like this image have gone into various regions all mm -hmm. around the world yeah all around the world I remember um, Michael Moore um, he said that Europeans have done some of the worst crimes in hu human history, mm -hmm. but they have managed to convince the whole world that black people are the real threat. Mm -hmm. That's some trickery right there. That's some trickery. Right? Now get this: Michael Moore is a white man. That's right. He he's a white man. He looks just like the image. <laughs> right. He he looks like the people he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. So this is what I mean: just because you look like that. But you have to understand there's a spirit. That's why we say there's two parts of this image. There's a characteristic yeah. that goes along with it as yes. well. The characteristic of the beast and the image of the beast are, um, they all go together, okay? But there is a look mm -hmm. and a spirit. Some people may have the look but not the spirit, you see? Mm -hmm. And I hate to say it, but there's some people who don't have the look but they got the spirit, mm -hmm. meaning you are a black person. <laughs> Who got the spirit of the image of the beast? Yeah, yeah, got the spirit of yeah. <laughs> that. It, it done because the scripture. That's why it says, "Be not conformed to this world, yeah. but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind." So there are people who look just like Watchmen and I, mm -hmm. who act just like the spiritual characteristics or the attributes of the beast. Of the beast, that's right. Because he, it's that spirit could, that's in him. Yeah, and if he could, he'll tread you down and break you into pieces too. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We right. know it for a fact. Okay, right. so there's a lot of debate on who Esau is in the last days. Mm -hmm. 
And so the scripture tells you some things about Esau that we oh, are yeah. going to get into. Yeah, let's let's cover this this scripture right here. Mm -hmm. I want to cover that scripture. This is Jeremiah chapter forty nine, verse ten. Okay, I'm going to say this. It is what it is. The truth is what it is. And if the truth offends you, you have a heart problem. Okay? You have a heart problem. And you need to go and say, Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. That's right. Okay? Because for so long, you have many who have believed that to have melanin in your skin was a curse. Yeah, Somebody sure got to explain that. that to me and make it make <laughs> sense to me yeah. how someone who has a natural protection from the sun is cursed because of it. You got to make that make sense mm -hmm. when the scripture clearly says. There's actually, they were teaching this. They were teaching it in the churches yes. too. In churches. I remember one, one apostolic church that was up in Michigan mm -hmm. actually taught that black people could not make it into heaven. Yeah. Interesting, huh? Mm -hmm. And they were shocked to find another black person that had received the Holy Spirit. They're like, "You have the Holy Spirit, the gift of the gift of the, of the, of the, of the Spirit. You showing the gifts of the Spirit? How?" They were shocked. This was mm. a white apostolic church. Yep. It is what it is, y'all. It is what it is. Yep. There were some who actually taught that the Most High, God as they call Him, don't deal with black people at all. And that he would never fill them with his Ruach HaKadosh or Holy Spirit. Mm. And all of those teachings right alongside the image of Serapis mm -hmm. and Jesus and the angels and the children of Israel mm -hmm. and all of the patrons of the Bible. All of them being in the likeness of the flesh of the people who were teaching this stuff. Yeah. It makes it so people like us. Some of us, because I never believe that stuff. But um, anyway, <laughs> I never it a either. lot of our people internalized that and they mm -hmm. actually believed that this was a curse mm -hmm. and that to look like that was a blessing. Mm -hmm. I've even heard so-called black melanated people who praised some of their siblings. I, um, some people that we know, the some were a little darker and they were praising some of them. They said, you were blessed with lighter skin. They actually told some of their siblings that they were blessed with lighter skin because the brainwashing worked. The it indoctrination yep. worked. And that was a form of worshiping the image of the beast right. to declare that someone looked better. Let me tell you something. Mm. Anytime you have people, watch what I'm about to tell you, right? Anytime you have people like Michael Jackson mm -hmm. who started out looking like a young black boy but later on ended up looking like a older white woman, mm -hmm. then something is wrong with that. And of course he says he has verb the vitiligo yeah, or whatever. But you know, you we, know the alterations we don't know. he did to his nose and all of that kind of stuff. He wanted to look like that, right? The image of the beast is not just the color. It's in his head. It yes. was in his head. He loved that image. That's why he didn't want kids looking like himself. Because he worshipped the image. Mm -hmm. Right? And there's a lot of people doing it. Look over in Africa. There are people that are, are bleaching their skin. Right? You have other people that are just so in love with this image of the beast. You know, if they have slanted eyes, they don't want their eyes to be slanted anymore. Look if you have dark, a, a thicker nose, I don't want this thick nose. Give me a pointed nose. Let's cut this pointed nose I love my wide nose. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to get rid of all of this. To get rid of this color. Mm. I want to look just like this image. And then you have, worship. And then you have uh, sisters that are chocolate. Mm. Right here in the U.S., wearing blonde wigs. Why mm. is that? They worship the image of the beast. Huh? Hey y'all, it is what it, it is. is. What it is. <laughs> and let me say something: uh, uh, worship is not what you think. You think you have to bow down and do no, all of that. No. Worship is devotion. Yeah, you're devoted to something. You you um adore it. Yes. You praise it. So don't think that worship means you got to be um saying glory hallelujah to the image, no. or that you have to clap for the image or bow to it. You don't necessarily have to bow and do all of that. You can look at the image. And change yourself to the likeness of the image. Yep. That's a form of devotion and why, worship. Why, why do you th why do you think the angel got so mad at, at John when John marveled at the at the great horde that was riding the beast? Mm. Here he looks at this great horde riding the beast and he marvels. He said, "Wow!" He this it says, "And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration." And the angel said, "Wherefore did you marvel at her? She's a great whore of all abominations of the earth. She's the mother." 
of all the abominations of earth and you're and you are mesmerized you mesmerized mesmerized right Mm -hmm. by it right that's because that's how it is that image is like that people see that image it automatically just doesn't do them in they glorify the image people everywhere glorify Glorify the image image. even those who look like the image glorify the image and they say that if you don't look like me then you are nothing you're beneath they call us um s-h-i-t skin okay that's what they say about those with melanin because they some of them know some of them know what's going on and so what they have to do is they they have to make you believe that the baraka or the blessing that has been bestowed upon you is actually the curse when the bible that they read and the bible that we read it explains to you that the curse was actually those that were without pigment okay miriam she was a melanated woman she was a black woman but when she sinned she became leprous as snow Mm -hmm. gehazi was a melanated man dark man but when he sinned he became leprous as snow and that passed on to his whole seat line as well. One Didn't that I, same curse fall mm-hmm. upon the Canaanites as well? Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Same curse. Fell. It was uh, a curse. That's right. It was a curse. And who married the Canaanite? Two Canaanite women. Esau. Esau. <laughs> right. Watch this here. I want you to understand something, right? Okay. I want you to get this thing. When it described Noah, it said he had pale skin and everything, right? Mm-hmm. He was an albino. Mm-hmm. Notice it says he had hair like wool, though. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's because... A black person can have an bino child and he can have the white skin, but his hair will still be what? Mm-hmm. Like wool. In the Whited Out series, we actually yeah. showed you that um, there was a couple that had a black African woman or wife. The man, the father, was albino, okay? Completely pale. His eyes were light. His hair was blonde. Mm-hmm. He was an albino, but it was woolly. When they had children, they had Mm -hmm. normal-looking black children. Mm -hmm. They didn't have albino children, okay? So they had normal-looking black children, okay? Mm -hmm. Again, I can already sense that someone is offended by this. We are trying to teach you some history, some um, genetics, and some understanding of Scripture because so long we have all been lied to. That's right. Even those of you who look like what the image of the beast looks like, you've been lied to. This is why the scripture says that the Gentiles are going to come from the ends of the earth and they're going to declare to us that their fathers have have taught them lies lies. in which there is no profit. Many are already coming forward saying, look, we've been taught lies. They've been teaching us a whole bunch of lies. But now it is time to set the record straight. Mm -hmm. Okay? It is time to set the record straight. The image of the beast has a look. Okay? And the whole world marvels after the image of the beast. This is why he can do all this wickedness. Right? Mm -hmm. This is why the image, this is why, I tell you, when when, when you look like the image of the beast, you can do whatever you want to do. That will lead to this world. And people are going to defend it. And they're going to defend it. Let me say something to you, though. If you're offended at this, I can name name a thousand things a lot worse that people should be offended about, Mm -hmm. but they are not offended about. Right. You know, the killing of blacks every single day. You know, turning up missing, lynching going on again, all of this stuff going on. Destruction of the planet. Planet. There's a lot more serious things to be offended by other than this image of the beast. Okay, because if you understand the word, the scripture tells you, he says, if any man be in Yahushua, he's a new creature, right? Right. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. But if you are upset by this, then maybe you're not you're not that new creature that you thought you were. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe you you're see, not reconditioned in Yah right. like you thought you was. Right. right? And I know that hurts. Mm-hmm. The, the scripture says that the word is a two-edged sword. That's right. Now, 
What's amazing is you got to check check out the hypocritical mind, mm -hmm. right? The hypocritical mind loves when the sword is slicing and dicing in every other direction, right? Mm -hmm. When it's telling black folk, look, you are the cursed people because you sinned against Yahuwah, all of this kind of stuff. The, everybody's like, yeah, get that sword. Ch chop them up. Chop them up, right? Mm -hmm. This is everybody's okay when the sword of the word of the Most High Yah is slicing and dicing in another direction. Mm -hmm. But when that sword comes in your own direction, there comes the offense. You're mm -hmm. offended, okay? You can't be offended. I mean, even some of our own people are offended because of the word that tells us that our forefathers mm -hmm. brought the curses upon us. Some of That's our people right. don't want to hear that. Yeah. As a matter of fact, they reject it, okay? Mm -hmm. That's Just why like, they still do the stuff they do, right? Right. Because they reject it. Right. But those of us who have accepted it, we said, okay, you know what? We have to accept this. Yeah. The scripture tells us that our forefathers and mothers sinned, our fathers and mothers sinned, and all have sinned, and that we have to confess the sins yes. of our forefathers and mothers, fathers and mothers, and our own sins. Mm -hmm. Those of us who are truly sorry, we have repented, yes. and we have acknowledged the sins of our forefathers. Mm -hmm. But if you cannot acknowledge the sins of your forefathers because of your image mm -hmm. and the privilege that you get with that image today, you're going to live out your privilege upon this earth. Mm -hmm. But because you have not a love for the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness, Yahuwah will say this, if you do not repent, depart from me. Mm -hmm. I never knew you. Guess what? There's no white privilege in heaven. No, it doesn't exist. Right? And there's no white privilege in hell. It doesn't exist. It don't exist. That's mm -hmm. right. If any man be in Yahuwah, he is a new creature. new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. new. But right. if you are holding on to heritage, color, privilege, mm -hmm. and the image of the beast, because you just so happen to be born with that look, chances are you have not repented truly. Yeah. That's right. It is what it is. It is what it is. Well, family, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you with these images. One thing I want to say so real quick. One last time, uh -huh. I want to I want to expound a little bit on Esau's seed oh, that's right. and we spoil. Did. Let me say this: yes. we got we got to cover the scripture here. I'm yes. sorry. Go ahead. Okay, so Jeremiah chapter forty nine and ten, yes. verse ten. Okay, it says, "But I have made Esau bear." Bear. Listen to that. I have uncovered mm -hmm. his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren, and his neighbors, and he is not. Mm, mm, mm. Interesting, huh? I want to show you something here. Watch this. That's Jeremiah 49, 10. Mm -hmm. Something happened with Esau's seed, okay? Yeah. Even though the scripture all, all already tells you that when he was born, he looked different than Jacob. He already was yeah. born looking different. But That's right. there was something additional that happened to Esau's seed. Yeah. Now, it says, I have made Esau bear. Mm. Right? To strip off. Strip off what? To make naked. Mm. Mm. You hear this? Now, we know Esau ain't bear as in nakedness. To drain away. Now, we know he's not naked like he ain't running around here without clothes. What is mm. he running out without? Melanin. Melanin, yes. <laughs> Uncover, make bear. That's right, make To bear. draw out. So he won't be able to hide himself. So he can't hide himself. He can't hide himself, right. Exactly. So That's at right. some point, Esau may have had enough melanin to look, but his, his hair was different. Yeah. The scripture talks about how he had the hair of... Uh, a, a goat, goat. Yeah. and Jacob had the hair of a sheep That's right. with, which has wool mm -hmm. so Esau already had differences okay but maybe the color was a little the same or close to the same mm -hmm. but the most I said I gotta strip him that's mm -hmm. why it says to strip off yeah. okay to make bare yeah. okay yeah. so that he cannot hide himself that's right and that's something right now um, Esau is trying to hide himself again by mm -hmm. using the children of Jacob. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, that's why there is a mixing of seed. That scripture in Daniel reminds me of that. Mm -hmm. um, Esau's seed was spoiled. His, his seed was infiltrated 
um, by and that was a part of the Whited Out series as well, where the the um, barbarians infiltrated the seed of um, the Romans, right? That's right. But it kind of reminds me of the seed, the scripture in Daniel where it talks about how and they shall mingle their themselves with the seed of men. Mm -hmm. Something, angels mingled themselves, and and we see another mingling taking place. In the last days as well. Yes, matter of fact, it's, it's funny is when you look at the scriptures, right? It talks about those other nations, right? Mm -hmm. the, the the image of of, um, of Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. right? The head of gold and the other images, right? Now notice when it got down to the feet, it says the toes was clay. Mm. That means they were indigenous. Get mixed with all those other metals. All those other metals actually represents. The seed of the fallen isn't that something? They had mixed with men back then. Yeah, they had mixed with men back then, but then it it was very strong back then. But as it got down to that last kingdom, it got blended in more. Mm -hmm. Wow! And so you see, today we see this is why we talk about this a lot, especially on my channel, where is a very spiritual thing that's taking place. People think, oh, you love who you love and all this, that, and the other. No, there is a spiritual thing taking place yeah. with all of this mixing, okay? I know it's hurtful to the ears. I know it may be offensive to the ears, but it is what it is. Yeah. The truth will always be whether we, you or I, or Watchmen, whether we accept it or not, the truth will always be. It is what it mm -hmm. is. Just because we don't like the truth or we deny the truth or we reject the truth or we despise the truth, the truth will always be. It will always be. <laughs> You're despising it's, it ain't gonna make it no ain't gonna make it's it go gonna away. Change. It's gonna stand forever. Right. That's right. So what we see taking place in these last days, for those of you who foolishly think that this is something that's just mm -hmm. a normal occurrence and that people are just falling in love with whomever or whatever. That's right. No, it's something very spiritual going on. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and spiritual don't necessarily mean it's a good thing. That's why we came up with the doctrine and white it out. Because that's what it's about. It's, that's what's going on. Right. The seed has been whited out all mm -hmm. over the planet. That's right. Even Esau's seed was whited out. Yeah. He didn't start off necessarily like what you see today. For those of you who keep saying, oh, it's the Arabs, is this, that, and the other, but you got to understand. They're all whited out. <laughs> you have to understand, the original Arabs used to be black. Mm -hmm. They were whited out. Mm -hmm. The original Asians used to be black. Mexicans. They were whited out. Yeah. Esau used yeah. to be black. He That's was right. whited out. Yeah, fair. <laughs> Right? Exactly. Same thing. White, white it, it out. out. That's right. That's that's why we did the documentary White It Out to show you how all the indigenous now you look around the world, you see all of these people that don't have melon. Why? Because they've been whited out. Mm -hmm. That's that's the scripture. It's in the word, right? Right. So again, when we showed you the part where Lamech, the father of Noah, when they started to see children that were born like this, they were afraid. So that lets you know that back in those days, it was not normal to see white skin. Yeah. This is why the man was afraid. He cut out of there and ran to his own father. He mm -hmm. was a grown man. And he's like, Daddy, something going on. Watch this. Watch, <laughs> you this. Know? Watch this now. Now, I'm going to take Lamech out of the past and bring him to the future and take him all over the world and just let him open his eyes. You know what he's going to say? Oh man! What, 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 the seed of the fallen is taking over the earth. Come on now, <laughs> come on now. It is what it is. <laughs> so that's what he was saying. So the seed of the fallen have taken over there everywhere. Mm -hmm. This is exactly he'll look at every continent. He'll he would even be shocked. Did you hear what Watchman said? <laughs> if you take Lamech out of the past. Where he saw just a couple and he was afraid when, and you bring him to 2020, that man would just. He'd be shocked. He would say there was an invasion that took yep. place. Mm -hmm. It's funny. <laughs> it's scary. Yeah. And it's sad. Funny, scary, and sad it's at the same, at the same time. time yeah. But guess what? It still is what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. And it was not our intention to be offensive at all. And guess what? If you look like these images, right? The scripture says you can be a new creature, right? You can be grafted into Yahushua Mashiach if you repent, right? 
If you become born again, born of the water of the spirit, right? And, and repent of your old life and be buried with them so that you are what you, that death comes upon you you're born again a new person new creature new birth right mm -hmm. then you that's no longer you right but I, I will say this a lot of people don't believe that's even possible right yeah some people believe that's not possible yeah. but let me tell you something Yahushua said if you continue in my words you are indeed my disciples <laughs> that's what he said you gotta continue okay he yeah. said something else after that, too. If you look like that image, mm -hmm. you better continue. You would have said? He said you better if continue. you look like that image, you better continue. In his words. Yeah. You see? But I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you. It ain't easy because mm -hmm. there's a lot of flesh to cut through. People are so yeah. attached to their own flesh, what they look like, uh, the privilege that comes with what they look like. They're so attached to that to where they don't think about eternity. You are only concerned about your existence in time. Mm -hmm. This timeline is where your concern is. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember, once you no longer exist in this timeline, mm -hmm. where will you spend eternity? Yeah. So if you focused more on that, you would not care about all this other stuff. You wouldn't be offended by these words. You you would be trying to say, okay, I already know he says, but my word has no place in you. Yeah. He said that, so that means I've got to seek him 10 times more. And you would do it more than 10 times more. You're going to say, I'm going to take it up to 100. I'm going to give my life to you. Mm -hmm, that's right. I'm going to dedicate my life to you. Mm -hmm. See how people worship the image of the beast? You would worship the image of Yahuwah and worship mm -hmm. him. That's right. And fall on your face before him mm -hmm. and plead with him. The scripture tells us to work out our own soul salvation fear. with fear and trembling. That's right, that's right. And if you are one of those who are boastful and prideful, because the scripture tells you that pride comes before a fall mm -hmm. and that he has nothing to do with a prideful person. Okay. Because of that, you need to humble yourself. Mm -hmm. Humility is one of the most difficult things to achieve. Yeah. Especially when you've lived within a life of privilege all your life. Mm -hmm. It's hard to give it up and humble yourself. That's right. So that's why that's why a lot of people just don't believe that it's even possible. Because yeah, it's I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you. I know it got to be a lot to deal with when you when you have the world telling you one thing and history telling you one thing, you just saw all this and then all of a sudden the truth comes and the truth is almost like a big punch in your jaw. And when the truth hits you, you want to fight it back, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if truth was a man and he hit you in your jaw, you're going to want to fight him back. Yeah, you'd be swinging you'd be, on you'd be truth. Ready to swing. You hit me, you hit me like yeah. this. Yeah, mm -hmm. because truth will knock you out. out. You'd be out cold on the ground. When you come to you, you hit me that hard. Yeah. I know it because I've been hit with truth, yes. right? I've been hit with truth. Mm -hmm. I've, I've gotten up after truth knocked me. I've been out two, three days. And yep, the truth will knock you unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> come together after two, three days and play. Okay, let me go back to that scripture again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, am I seeing this right? Am I hearing this yes. really? Mm -hmm. You know, that's how the truth is. Yes. And so if it knocks you out, hey, just when you get wake up, don't, don't come out fighting against mm -hmm. truth. Just sit there for a minute. Sit there for a minute. Really Regroup yourself. You can't, you can't beat him, right? Because if you go to fight against truth, it's going to just knock you out again. It's going to keep knocking you out. And eventually, truth, gonna truth, get, will always truth is truth going to get tired of fighting you. And you know what he's going to do? He's going to just take you and Turn put you, you in over. Head. Or, yeah, yeah, he exactly. He's just drop you right in there. You can't accept the truth. Then I'm going to just strong illusion. You need to go to hell. Yeah, because the look. should be damned. Yeah, because the scripture says, many shall come to me in that day and say, Lord, Lord. Didn't I? Haven't I done all these things in your name yeah. and in your name cast out devil? Only yeah. a prideful person will, do that. will stand before Yah <laughs> and declare before him yeah. everything that you've done for him. Haven't I done all these things, mm -hmm. these things for you and in your name cast out? He's going to say, depart from me. I never knew yeah. you. I never knew you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I know this one is very difficult for a lot of people. I know it's difficult. Yeah. Um, even for... Um, so-called Israelites, I know it's difficult because many of you have ad adopted a certain belief or mindset, okay? Mm -hmm. And because you've adopted that belief or mindset and you don't want to hear the truth... Um, you've been conditioned to love that image. Mm-hmm. <laughs> many of them are conditioned to really love the image. And some of you are married to someone who looks like that image. Mm 
That's right. And so we've we've already experienced the fight from you all for for years now. Mm-hmm. It is what it is, though. Yes, Again, is. the word offends. It wasn't our o- intention to offend at all. We just want to bring you some truth because while there is blood running warm in your veins. You have an opportunity to seek the Most High. He says, seek me while I may be found. Call upon me while I am near. So yeah. that sounds to me like there may be a time where he won't be able to be found of you. Okay? Now, see, the scripture says that the man of sin would be revealed in the last days. Yes. But also that image would be revealed, and that's what's going on now. He's revealing What we're it. doing is we're revealing. We're showing you what the image looks like. Mm-hmm. We're showing you that image. And that the whole world mm-hmm. worships the image of the beast. Mm-hmm. I mean, what if you all are honest with yourself, if you're honest with yourself, even so-called black people, think about this. I'm going to just throw this quick one in there. Mm-hmm. From the time you have a little girl, you go out and get her a white Barbie doll. <laughs> and even those little girls, even if you, because let me tell you something. Whew, we never sat our children down and taught them that. It's a spirit, y'all, that's going around. Mm-hmm. Because I remember... My daughter, Rebecca, she is as beautiful as Rebecca is when she was a little girl. And we didn't fill her head with all of this stuff yeah. when she was a little girl. She said that uh, white people are prettier. Yeah. And and I remember we were living in Michigan at the time. I was trying to figure out where the said, where did that come heck from? did that come from? But you know where it come from? I'm going to tell you where it come from. Okay. Yes. Come on now. Come Watch on. Watch this. When you look at television, right? And I'm I'm going back in the days, right? Because mm-hmm. now they they done changed things a little bit in television. But when you go back in the days in television, right? Each time you saw a black person, they were doing something crazy. They were either stealing, killing, or something crazy. Pimping a horn, pimping a horn. Like it was all of that when it came to black people. But when it came to white people, they were the doctors, the lawyers. They were the millionaires, the billionaires. Jumping they in were the, the swimming be- pools. Matter of fact, Miss America, on the beach. Miss America, <laughs> Miss Universe, Miss World, whatever you want to call it, was always white back in the days. So everything everybody saw was white. Oh, black people, no, they don't sit on the beach and enjoy the sun. It was always white folk. That on the saw box of cereal. Like sitting up, sitting up <laughs> on the beach with a, a pina colada, sipping it, living large. It was mm-hmm. always the white folks, yeah. and so when you see this image all the time, you go, you look, look you go and get In a the history. Catalogs. Don't get a history book and open up a history book, and all you see is white folks and oh, black slaves. Then you go get again yeah, black slaves. Then you go get a, uh, a catalog, like you said, and you open up a catalog and look at bass and clothes. It's always white folks. It's always, that's what a you always A cute little see. white girl right here, cute yeah, little white boy. And exactly. there's their mom and their dad together. So, so when, when you have a young black child, that's, that's all they see. Mm-hmm. Well, of course. No wonder. Mm-hmm. No wonder when each they turn they on the, the cartoons. They, mm-hmm, each time they show the Savior, the brother's the, the, come to save us mm-hmm. from our sins. Here he is. The image. The whole world marvels after the image after of the, the image. beast. That's the right. look, the characteristics, the look and the characteristics, the attributes, the representation, the portrayal, whatever it is, the whole world marvels after that. That's right. And so this is why you'll have a little girl like our daughter Rebecca, who we didn't sit her down and teach her all of that, but that came out of her mouth. Mm-hmm. You see, now... And she changed all, since then. Oh course. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. She's she's a, a, an adult now, yeah. but back then you have to ask yourself where it come from. And then when you look at the doll test, all of these little black children, when they have the white doll and the black doll, and they ask them which one is the ugly one, what made these black children say the black one, the one that looks like them? They think is the ugly one, and they say which one is the pretty one, the white one. You know what? There it goes again. Mm-hmm. They were caused to worship. They were caused the to worship the image. In their mind, that's what they worship. They mm-hmm. adore that image. There mm-hmm. it is again. Mm-hmm. Wow. Everywhere. You go over to China. We put this in the documentary too. They're even trying to get the slant out of their eyes. Mm-hmm. And they think it's a, an improvement to marry lighter. When you look at those in India. And we're going we gonna to cut it off in a minute, family. In India. Mm-hmm. They think that they have a caste system there. The darker you are, the the lower class or the lower caste you are. The lighter you are, they consider you to be the better. Mm -hmm. And they like for their children to marry lighter so that their offspring or their grandchildren become lighter. And we see that happening even among so-called black people. We've talked about this plenty of times where you will have uh, black men and women and even grandparents 
who marvel mm -hmm. at the lighter skinned grandchildren. I've, I've even shared stories on my channel. And watch this. You, you remember the movie Jungle Fever? Mm hmm. He already had a woman that was, was looked, mixed. She was, she was mixed. mixed, yeah. That wasn't enough. But that wasn't enough, right? And she even said it in the movie. Even his she mixed said, wife she said, said it. She said, I wasn't light enough for you, was I? <laughs> <laughs> right there in the movie. She, she says, you had to go and get yourself a white woman. <laughs> he said, he, he probably said, I got to have me 100%, you know, 100% white. Mm, mm, mm. All cream, no coffee. It is what it is, family. Mm. The whole world marvels. Mm hmm after the image of the beast. Yep. Mm -hmm. We love you, family. Yes, we love you and all. And we're going to bring you that truth. The you know, truth is what it is. Truth. It is what it is. And I'm going to roll these images one more time for you okay. so you can look at them. We love you, family. And on that note, we're going to say Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Even though I had a whole lot more I could say, but <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we love y'all. We love you all. We We're going to roll you. these images and be you blessed. all enjoy the rest of your day. That's Don't right. be offended by the word. The truth is what it is. The truth will always be whether we like it or not. That's right. Well, behold the image of the beast. Shalom, family. Shalom. <laughs>